Hey, good morning everybody. Today we are going to go to Florida on the eastern coast and we are going to dive with a giant fish that almost disappeared a few decades ago, the Goliath Cooper. His story now on this channel. our man Bill Parks. So Bill is preparing the boat. The boat is a Bertram 25 that is very good for diving. A lot of room in there. We'll talk more about this later. I've had it more than half my life and I'm 60 so yeah. Let's have a look to his garage and I like the place you know it's quite busy I must say with all tools and kind of equipment. I wonder where he does put his car. Probably outside, I hope. <laughs> Don't break your neck in this garage. It's a running disaster. No, I, mean, I have plans for it, but I never find time to put it where it needs to be. But there's a lot of stuff in there, all on top of each other. It's a mess. <laughs> this is what we call a proper rebreather, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now that's the serious stuff. Serious. Yeah, jump! <laughs> okay, Bill. Huh? I like your boat, you know. Thanks, me too. I must say that um, I'm shaking too much coffee maybe this morning. Or not enough. I have been uh, on many diving boats and I must say this will be my second favorite after the Zodiac. That's that's quite a compliment to Bertram. Uh, they thought their boats out very well and that's why soon I'll be completely restoring this boat back to the way it looked when I bought it 30 years ago. It's a very fine boat for diving, roomy. Look at the place so you get there, you know. Ideal for camera and everything fits. Look at the room. I can tell you, it's lovely place, you know, lovely boat. And this man here is Walt, <laughs> expert in rebreather. Sometimes. He, he doesn't <laughs> speak too much, but he's very really good. Now we are on the boat and we are going to dive with uh, Goliath Cooper. No need to tell you that I'm very excited about that. But first, let's ask a few questions to Bill. Uh, what was the situation of the Goliath Cooper a decade or more ago? In this area in particular, they were almost extinct. You almost never saw one. And I was diving commercially then three to five days a week. And if I saw one a year, it was a lot. They were gone. And if one showed up, because they were unprotected, it would immediately be speared and sold. Wow. Uh, and we all practiced that because we knew if we left that fish, the next diver would shoot it. So, How did you get the fish protected? You know, that's my... The effort to, uh, to uh, get the fish protected started with Don De Maria, who's uh, been a friend of mine since the mid-1970s and hunted Goliath Grouper extensively. But he saw, as more people got involved, that the number too many people were taking too many fish. The numbers went down. So he called me initially uh, and said, we need to protect this animal. So then it was Don De Maria, my late wife Chris, and myself that went out and got the information and presented it to the various regulatory bodies and got the fish protected. So that's how we did it. As my, the first evidence that the fish were coming back wasn't... You almost wouldn't say it was evidence they were coming back. It was more evidence that they were protected. Because my wife and I came up on a very large Goliath grouper, maybe 130 kilos, maybe more. And nobody was hunting him. Nobody was shooting at him. And that was the first step. And we did a lot of film of that fish. And then 
over the next four or five years, you'd start to hear one here, two there, one somewhere else. And, and so it was probably, I'm guessing, maybe five years before we started to see where, you, where it wasn't so terribly uncommon to see one anymore. As far as when the first of the bona fide aggregations for spawning uh, came about, I don't know. I, I didn't see it happen. I wasn't part of it. When we saw the aggregation, it was in August of 2001. Uh, for seeing the Goliath grouper aggregations, Florida is the only place in the world where you can see this fish in large numbers or any type of aggregation. And the east coast of Florida is the only place where you can see them easily. You know. I confirm, with all my life with Cousteau, I have never seen a place with concentration of Goliath grouper or giant grouper like that. So. Let's go to work, man. So are we at the place here? We are very close, yes. It's the wreck of the caster. We are at the place now. And I was told that there is a particular grouper that come to see the divers. His name is Wilbur and he has his own Facebook page. Can you believe that? Hey, you want to see what's inside this camera? Come in. This is a red camera, 8K, and I'm shooting at 30 frames a second. I want every single detail on the picture. That's it for today. Yeah, the real reason is the key of success. Uh, we come close, no bubbles, stay longer in the water. You just have to have uh, the right rebreather. <laughs> Can you make less noise? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Love you. We Love are you back. To death, man. We are back in the harbor, and that was a lovely dive with uh, Wilbur, this very friendly grouper. And I can wish only one thing: that uh, all the divers will have the chance to see so beautiful fish. Uh, I don't see uh, a reason that this fish uh, would not belong to everyone. What's, what can you say about the future of this fish? It's uncertain. Uh, the animal is, as you described, is loved by divers by the thousands, all of the, the Goliath group are, because they're so spectacular. Uh, but there's a lot of people that feel there's too many of them, even though they're completely mistaken. Uh, they want to hunt them again and kill them. And it's been a very hard battle to keep that from happening. So the battle is not over. Guys, I count on you and I wish you good luck and you will make it. Appreciate that. Thanks.